Hello everyone. Well, with spring just around the corner, I thought it was high time I unboxed my Dupre Neat steam cleaner. I've had this for a while. I bought it myself and uh, I've got some jobs to do around the house, specifically in the kitchen, around the cooker. So I thought I'll get this open and give it a go. It might help me with my spring cleaning. So without any further ado, let's open it. If you want a bit of behind the scenes action of this video, tune into my Rogers Bits and Doings channel where I'm filming today a behind the scenes video of what I'm up to today apart from making this video and you'll see me choosing a shirt <laughs> and you'll see me choosing the socks. There's a lot that goes into making these videos folks. So for some behind the scenes footage you can check out those videos on Rogers Bits and Doings it's not really for children that channel i might say the odd minor swear word very minor though i do tend to keep things quite clean on my youtube channels so here we have keep it neat and lots of symbols of areas that uh, we can clean with this neat cleaner it's got a bed i don't know what that is oh wooden floor i think kitchen that's possibly tiled flooring cars upholstery your bathroom of course toilets windows and uh, it says here there's some indicator lights orange is making steam wait about eight minutes green got max steam so we've got to wait eight minutes for this for this steam cleaner to fully heat up but once it's heated up i expect we'll have quite a long time we can steam it's not like a handheld steamer that will run out quite quickly because of the small water container this is a bigger machine so you can carry on steaming that could be a title of a movie carry on steaming to your heart's desire so um here are some accessories i'll open those in a minute this is uh, one of the wands or you could call it a lance i, I expect should be another one in the box and they, they're plastic but they feel quite well made Now we've got the hose, but the hose is attached to the machine. It won't uh, come off. So we'll have to take the cleaner out, the machine out. So it's got a built-in carry handle, quite light. I think that's, uh, yeah, I think that's everything out of the box. Let's take off this uh, plastic bag. Oh, it's tied up here, look. I'll just open it. So it's, it's basically a cube, isn't it? Now one thing, I think where Neat have missed the trick with this machine, it would have been better, I'd have preferred this to be slightly bigger and have storage for all the accessories inside and to be able to take the hose off and coil it and somehow have it stored inside or even maybe a little storage box that this could sit on. Because, yeah, we've got all the additional tools, which I'm going to show you in a minute. There's nowhere to put them. Some bigger steam cleaners do have onboard tool storage. So that's a bit of a shame, I think. Right. Let's take off this unnecessary plastic bag. I think the only way, oh, I have to come off this way. If I'm to reuse this for any reason, I'll pull it off at the, uh, at the handle. There we go. Well, you know, it's a very nice length, length of hose. You can have the cleaner safely on the floor while you're directing the steam to the area you're cleaning and of course we've got the ones with some warning label on them hot surface avoid contact clicks together you can use one or both or none of them depends what you're cleaning if you're cleaning inside your oven you won't want the ones the ones are useful for when you're cleaning floors and uh, refreshing your carpets aren't they so they they click together very firmly and uh, we've got a little trigger here which I'm assuming releases the steam 
and there's a, a button there so you can have the steam permanently going until you squeeze the trigger and it pops out. Let's have a look at all the accessories and incidentally you can buy an additional accessory kit. I think it's about £30, I could be wrong. It comes in a storage bag, it's 30 or 40 I can't remember at the time of making the video. I'll put a link below, I'll put an Amazon link below for this machine and for the additional accessories. It'll be affiliated link so if you buy from that link I get a little bit of commission. So let's have a look. Assume, oh I hope the instructions are in here because I haven't seen any and you do need instructions I think for something like this. Ah yes we do. Here we go. Neat multi-use steam cleaner instruction manual. So it's in several different languages of course. Read instructions before use. I think I'll have this open so I can tell you what each accessory is called. So I've shown you the extension tubes. Now this is some sort of squeegee. So this could be the win possibly window cleaning attachment. It is. This is the window tool. So we've got holes. I don't know, just about see them, can you? There's holes where the steam obviously comes out and two squeegees. So you can use that on your windows, use it on your tiling, use it on your shower cubicle. So there's that. Again, everything feels pretty well made. I suspect this is made in China. Here's a triangular shaped nozzle with a brush. I don't know if the brush comes off. Probably not. Very, very stiff brushes, so not for delicate surfaces. This is called a triangular tool. And uh, I assume the steam comes out of the middle of that, possibly. Yes, must do. What else do we have? Well, this looks like a floor tool, doesn't it? Indeed it is. This is your floor tool. But you can't use it like this. You have to attach microfiber pads. You've got some clips that hold the pads in position. And we have three, that's good, three microfiber pads. And they are called microfiber pads in the instruction book. I, I almost don't need to look at the instructions, so they'll be washable, obviously. Machine wash cold air dry made in China it says. The kit I mentioned earlier does come with spare uh, microfiber cloths which will be handy. So that's your, for your floors. Then we've got, ooh, oh look, we have a fragrance disc. So if you want to have a pleasant fragrance while you're steaming, you can insert that disc somewhere. Where does it go? In between the, uh, the cloth. It goes in between the cloth and the nozzle. But the advantage of steam cleaning, of course, is you don't need detergents. So for people who have got allergies, who might, might be sensitive to fragrances, perfumes, cleaning, cleaning materials, just use basic water, distilled if you've got very hard water, and um, clean with the power of steam and water, so no no residue left. So, but if you want to emit a fragrance, that's available. This these are good quality. I've had a few steam cleaners in the past, and this I think they call them a bonnet. Yes, this is a microfiber bonnet. In fact, it would fit a little baby. <laughs> it might just about fit in the top of my head, but I'm not going to try. <laughs> So yeah, it's a, it's a good thick quality bonnet. So that will go over the triangular tool. I, I assume normally the triangular tool can be used with the brushes for, you know, heavy duty cleaning. I'll check before I demonstrate, but normally this is what you do for, you know, for worktops and things that you don't want to scrub and the microfiber will absorb the dirt as the steam penetrates through. Of course, all this will be washable. Then we've got, is it just one? Another microfiber 
cloth. This one is called <laughs> a microfiber cloth. So we've had the bonnet. This is a cloth. Now, I would say that you don't have to use Dupre microfiber cloths. I've got a load of microfiber cloths about this size and a bit thicker as well. So as long as it fits on the nozzle, you could use other microfiber cloths you've already got because there's only one supplied. I'm assuming this cloth is for the main floor nozzle. I'm assuming without, ch without checking the instructions, I will be reading them thoroughly, but that's possibly it clips under here. Seems a bit big, so you get the general gist. And of course that comes off. It's uh, shedding bits all over my jeans at the moment. They might benefit from an initial wash. Never put fabric softener in the wash when you're doing microfiber cloths because it can stop them working effectively. Microfiber is supposed to absorb the dirt. If you put fabric softener on a microfiber cloth, it tends to coat the cloth with a sort of oily substance and it can repel moisture and dirt. So never use fabric softener with your microfiber cloths. Yeah, it's shedding bits everywhere. Let's just check. Well, there are more little bits to look at. This is for your detailed cleaning. So I'll be using this sort of attachment on my oven. This is your steam lance. So you can use this just like it is. You see a little brass end there. So this, if I take the hose or take the wands off, we can fit this directly to here and I've got an idea of what I can use this for. I've got a, a built-in gas hob, so it'll be useful for cleaning that, but around the edge of the gas hob, where it comes into contact with the worktop, you can get grease and grime and dirt down the side, which is hard to clean with a cloth. Using a steam cleaner, you can actually jet the steam out, force the dirt out, and then use another cloth just to wipe it away. So I'll be trying that. And then, Finally, I think this is all the other accessories. We've got various tiny nozzles, whoops. Some will be the same, I suspect. According to the instructions, it says these are, well, the nylon brushes and brass. So I think all these are the same. One, two, three, four, five. They all feel the same stiffness. So they're not too stiff but I wouldn't use them, use them on anything delicate. So these attach and it's good you get a lot of them because you can keep one you know somewhere under the sink in your bathroom and just keep it for your bathroom or keep a couple for your bathroom maybe three for your kitchen or other areas of the home. I wouldn't I wouldn't mix and match what you clean your bathroom with with your kitchen but you can just fit I'm assuming they will just fit on. Let me just check. So I'm doing this without properly. Oh yeah, they just push on. It's quite a firm push. But now we've got a little nylon brush. So that's good for anything that it would be a hard wearing surface you'd use that on. Nothing too delicate. I can think of many different ways to use that. Now the nylon brushes are supplemented with a stiffer brass brush. That is for more vigorous cleaning your grill pans, your barbecues, the racks in your barbecues, that sort of thing. Um, the shelves in your oven, that sort of thing. This is what I would use that for. Nothing delicate because that will scratch the surface of anything too delicate, I would say. Of course, the instructions will give you tips, I'm sure. So that's everything, I think. I've shown you all the accessories. If I find this useful, I think I will fork out for the additional accessories. So I've got spare brushes and spare microfiber cloths and a nice bag to keep them in. Well, I've looked at all the tools. Let's have a look at the cleaner itself. So here's the cleaner with the retractable built-in carry handle. So you can carry that around your home, carry it up the stairs to your bathroom. The big button on the front here turns the steam cleaner on and will also indicate when it's ready to steam this will change color the top here we've got the filler cap that you need to remove there's no jug supplied with this but 
use your own jug and it's got a nice deep well so you shouldn't really spill any water this will take a maximum of 1200 millilitres of water which is 1.2 litres or 40 ounces and the instructions say only put water in this machine don't add any fragrance or essential oils to it just water there's a little warning label here what does that say Warning, never unscrew and remove the boiler cap until all pressure has been released. With some steam cleaners, they have a, a fail-safe cap, so you can't actually take it off. So it looks like it is possible to remove the cap on this machine when there's still pressure in the tank, because basically what this does, it boils up the water, pressurizes it, and when you squeeze the trigger, the pressurized steam escapes through the nozzle. So if you need to fill this between cleanings i mean you'd have to be cleaning an awful lot i think to need to refill this during your job you need to make sure that uh, you've squeezed the trigger turn it off squeeze the trigger make sure all the steam is out and then carefully remove the cap so we'll pop it back on for now and obviously when you fill it just make sure the cap is on tightly if it starts spitting out any um, water from around the edge, you know you haven't put the cap on properly. Underneath, we've got two small swivel casters, two fixed wheels. We've got handy cord storage and the little label, the rating label on this, Dupre Neat Steam Cleaner. The model is DUPO2. OW UK as this is a UK model yeah, it is made in China and uh, it's 1500 watts 1500 watt boiler so similar to a kettle really some kettles are more than that obviously so we've got the cable a bit awkward position obviously when you put this away you have to make sure it's empty because you need to tip this machine up to uh, wrap the cable around. Let's, oh, it's quite a lot of cable by the looks of it and a nice long hose. So you should be able to clean an, a good area before you need to find another socket. There we go, that's all the cable out. Yep, yeah, that's a pretty decent length of cable. I'll put the details below the video, the specifications, so you can see the length of cable. Okay, well I need to remove the little protective cover on the three pin plug. I'm going to fill this with water, plug it in and we'll wait for the steam. I'm on my second jug now. This particular jug takes half a litre. Okay, so the neat steam cleaner is full. I need to replace the cap. Make sure it's on properly. There we go. Just tighten it, don't over tighten. That should be enough. Now I need to plug it in and switch it on. The indicator is showing orange, which means the steam cleaner is heating up. So after about eight minutes, that will turn to green to show us that the steam is ready to be used. And during use, the orange and green lights will fluctuate. So when it turns green, you know the steam is ready. Okay, well, in eight minutes time, I'll be back and we'll try out this neat steam cleaner. As you can see from the green light, it means that the steam generator is ready for use. The light will go out and turn orange when it heats up again. So you can't have continuous steam all the time. I wouldn't have thought because it does need to keep heating it up. So. As you're using it normally, you'd be steaming an area and normally using a cloth to wipe the debris that's been dislodged. So um, as you're using it on and off, the steamer should be maintaining the steam for you automatically. Let's give it a go. I've got the concentrated nozzle on. Wow, that is pretty good and certainly a lot lot better than the little handheld one I've been using. We've still got a green light so there's still more steam but if I was to keep the steam trigger pressed I assume the light will go out and uh, well it won't go out it'll turn orange.
Well, it seems to be allowing an awful lot of steam. It's obviously pressurized it enough. So we're gonna get uh, quite a lot of cleaning done, I think, before we need to pause for it to reheat the water in the tank. Okay, well, it's no good me kneeling on the floor in my clean living room when I've got a kitchen with grease and grime in it. So let's uh, unplug. Oh, you can see now it has turned orange. So it's, it's turned the boiler back on to heat up the water to maintain the steam pressure. So I'll have to unplug it, carefully take it into the kitchen, plug it back in, wait for the green light, and we'll see if we can uh, get some dirt removed from around my cooker. I'm in my kitchen now and I deliberately left my gas hob fairly dirty. Obviously it's probably cleaner than some people's gas hobs, but it is pretty dirty for my gas hob. What I want to try first with the concentrated steam nozzle is just around here where, as I said, it's hard to get a cloth. You could get a brush under there, I suppose, but it's ideal to use steam. Obviously, never point the steam towards yourself or pets or other people. And you can use any sort of cloth. I've got uh, a new microfiber cloth here to, to help capture any of the muck. So let's, uh, let's give it a go. I don't know what the best way of doing it is. Just maybe hold the cloth this side while I direct the steam here. Now that's what happens when you first turn it on. Can you see what's happened there? A lot of water's come out. So what I'm going to do, direct it into the sink first. In fact, cleaning around the sink will be useful. So let's wipe that uh, excess water off. We'll try again, we should get more steam now. Yeah, that's dealt with that. Yeah, that's pretty good. We'll do down the side. Ah, oh, you can definitely see some crud coming out here. Just wipe it away. Oh yes, that's satisfying. There we go, I think that's got everything. I've been looking forward to doing that for a long time. I knew when I got this steam clean, I thought the first thing I'm gonna do is tackle any crud that's down the side of my hob. Obviously I can go around the back. Now just one word of caution, if you're going to be steaming around any electrical appliance, make sure it's unplugged or isolated from the mains. I mean, I suppose I could have uh, isolated this because it's a gas hob, but of course it does have an electric ignition. But I've just been going around the edges. I've still got this edge to do. Let's have a look at uh, actually cleaning the hob itself. I'll remove the pan supports and the burners because one thing that's really hard to clean is around the burners here. Hopefully you can see there's a quite a bit of crud around the ignition. I have switched off the hob, I've isolated it, so there should be no, yeah, there's no electricity running to it. You have to be careful though, directing the steam around your burners. You don't want to get any water anywhere inside, so probably best not to go too close. So I'll see what I can uh, do with the steam at uh, a few inches away. As I said, I don't want to risk putting my hob out of action. But I will leave it before I turn it on again, before I flick the switch, I'm gonna leave it half an hour just to make sure that any moisture has gone. It's got rid of a bit there. Wipe 
wipe it. Ooh, you can see all, all around, you can see the difference, even on the areas I haven't really been concentrating on. It's not perfect. It could do with the little nylon brush, which I will attach. But for sort of general cleaning, if the hob isn't too dirty, I might be able to just get away with steaming the whole area and wiping it with this microfiber cloth. quite noisy <laughs> right yeah it, it's released or uh, helped loosen there is a bit of uh, dirt there might need another treatment it's a bit scratched my hob but that's nothing to do with what I'm doing now because this is a new soft microfiber cloth and I'm using steam so the scratching has happened previously Yeah, it's cleaning it, but it's highlighting the scratches. So I might get to have a look at some stainless steel polish to help disguise the scratches. But you can see the principle just in a few squirts. I mean, there is still a bit of stubborn dirt I can see. Yeah, I think for that, I'm going to attach the nylon brush According to the instructions, the nylon brush is ideal for delicate surfaces, including ovens, stovetops, tiles, grout, refrigerators, showers, bathtubs, waste cans, and toys. So it should be okay for this stainless steel hob. I think that's uh, about it for the hob. I'll use my cloth. Oh, it's very, very scratched. But yeah, this is, uh, oops, I haven't scratched it just now. This is previously scratched. I'm gonna go online and see if I can get a stainless steel polish that I can use. I mean, it's very, very clean. The trouble with stainless steel, and I'm gonna try out my cooker hood and the backsplash, I often find it's hard to find a cleaner that doesn't leave marks. You want something that's streak free. You just want the clean to show through. You don't want any residue of detergent. And I think when this dries, that looks pretty good to me. And as I said, I'm gonna leave this half an hour or so just to make sure any moisture that might have got down into the burners has dried off just got to be careful around some items especially your appliances well I'm really pleased with that another thing that steam is good for is cleaning around more intricate areas like the knobs on this gas hob as I said earlier be careful when steaming around knobs and switches especially on electrical appliances isolate them from the mains before using your steamer. Another thing to be wary of is the printing on the fasciers of uh, your appliances, washing machines, cookers, refrigerators. Now, in the case of this hob, I know that the printing here that indicates which knob operates which burner, I know the printing is under the glass, so I'm quite happy to use the steam on it. But be careful if it's printed on the surface, because if you use the nylon brush or the steam, you might find you've no symbols left on your appliance and you won't know what knob does what. 
For this though, I'm pretty happy that it will be okay. I'm only going to use the concentrated steam and my microfiber cloth. I'm not going to use the nylon brush on this part. It doesn't need it, it's clean, but I know there'll be quite a bit of gunk. I can see mess just on the sides of the knobs here that could do with blasting out. So I'm gonna hold the microfiber cloth behind and blast out the dirt. Yeah, I saw quite a few bits coming out. Obviously you do need a cloth just to dry the surface. Wow, I don't think those knobs have been as clean as they were since I had this hob installed. That is fantastic. And again, obviously because residue, water residue could possibly go down where it shouldn't. As I said, wait a while before connecting the hob back up. But yeah, oh, I'm looking forward to uh, really cleaning around my house with this. That looks absolutely fantastic. The burner caps on my hobs always get pretty dirty and they don't come clean in the dishwasher. I normally have to take them off and uh, use a Brillo pad or a scouring pad to remove it. So we'll give it a go with the nylon brush and the steam. I'll just leave it in situ. Probably not the best thing to do because it's uh, <laughs> sprayed a load of muck on my clean hob. But yeah, it is actually, I'm gonna to have to work on it a bit more. I think the best technique for this is to use an old cloth or tea towel. I'll just fetch one out of my drawer and place the burner cap on that and then use the brush. Well, it's not perfect yet. There you go. Let's about to see. But normally I would be scrubbing for quite some time. I still need to work on it a bit longer. It's, it's quite hot actually with the steam. But you can see it's pretty effective. Just need to go around the edge a bit more. It still needs a bit of work, but that, that's not bad. There you go, focus. Still a little bit there. But considering I'm not using any harsh chemicals, I'm pretty happy with that. The pan supports are the worst thing I have to clean on this hob. They're not too bad at the moment. They do go in the dishwasher, but they never come 100% clean. But yes, I can use the steam with the nylon brush on the pan supports. Bit silly doing it now, possibly should have done it before cleaning the bottom, but I'll just show you the principle. I mean, they weren't filthy, but the two bits I've just gone over I don't know if we can see. Yeah, I can see a difference. This is the side I've just gone over and this side I haven't done yet. So yes, but obviously I've made a mess of the underside of my hob now. So I'm not doing it the correct way, but obviously it's the first time I've used this cleaner. I'm just giving you a few ideas. But I think the first thing most people would want to tackle when buying a new steam cleaner is their oven. Once their oven is clean, 
they'll be looking around their house for other areas so they'll be doing other areas in the kitchen and then of course once the kitchen is sparkling clean it's time to have a look at the bathroom and uh, using the steam to to jet out a lot of muck from inaccessible places you can see my stainless steel backsplash has got some marks on it. I mean, I can try cleaning it. Oh, we will. We'll try cleaning it with some normal cleaner. Just let that soak in. I'll get a cloth. Stamp on the cloth. We'll do half of it. it's looking okay but normally when I dry it it still has some marks on it unless I take quite some time I bet this is going to show how effective that cleaner is <laughs> or is it doesn't show up until it's dry ah yes now it's drying it looks better don't know if you can see there's still marks on it and I've been using, you know, use a regular household cleaner. So let's try it with steam. This side does look far worse than the side I've cleaned using a regular cleaner. So yes, a regular cleaner does work. It has still left these streaks and I'm not sure if they will come off. So what I'm going to try, I'm going to use the triangular head with the microfiber bonnet. I don't want to risk scratching. I, don't, I think it'll be okay, but I think for a larger area, you're better having the microfiber bonnet on. And I'm going to have to take off the concentrated nozzle. Again, when you're removing, changing the tools, be careful not to squeeze the trigger. Let's take that off there. It might drip a bit of water. We'll pop this on and we'll uh, see if we can clean the rest of this. Okay, I've got a, a clean, dry microfiber cloth. I suppose you could leave it to dry on its own, but maybe for things like stainless steel, it's not 100% clean, I can see already, as I'm removing the steam. Yeah, there's still some marks on this. I've always had trouble getting this uh, stainless steel splashback 100% clean. I think I had to use something uh, quite strong to get rid of these streak marks. I'm not sure what causes it. I think I have to use a specialized stainless steel cleaner. So not uh, not a hundred percent, but it's still a lot better than it was. And I've cleaned most of it anyway, without using any detergents. a bit hard to get into all the nooks and crannies of my cooker hood with the microfiber bonnet. Let's give it a bit of a, a dry. Wow. I always have trouble with stainless steel. It always, whatever I use on it, tends to leave streak marks. But so far, Obviously I'll do this properly, I'm just making a video for you to see the sort of things you can clean, but wow, I must say, again, that cooker hood looks very, very clean. It wasn't filthy dirty, obviously, but that that is very impressive. Here we have the inside of the oven door. It's not filthy because I don't let my oven get really bad. So it has been cleaned fairly recently, but there's still dirt on it. I'm going to try first using the microfiber bonnet. And 
that'll do. Give it a wipe. No, it's not, I can feel now when I'm using the cloth, it's done well, it's got a lot of the grease off, but not the more stubborn grease. There's still bits, so the microfiber, oh, but you can see, look, there's dirt there. We'll try it with the nylon brush. It's got some more off, but again, although it looks quite shiny, looks better, but there's still quite a lot of grease. I don't want to use the brass brush on the glass. That's really for things like barbecues and your grill pan. We can try the concentrated steam with the nylon brush. Again, it's made an improvement, but it's going to take some time to remove all the grease on this oven. I might have to use some cleaner. It's still tacky, but once you own a steam cleaner, once you've got the surfaces, you've got your oven clean, if you use it once a week, you're not going to be trying to clean up a load of buildup of grease and grime. Doing it once a week will keep it clean. It's a lot better but it still needs more work. But as I said, when I've had steam cleaners in the past, I find them most useful for blasting out steam from areas that are hard to reach. For example, on this oven here, on the seal, there's a lot of gunk, which I would need to get a brush to help remove. A cloth wouldn't do it. So we'll try it with the little nylon brush, see if I can clean the bottom of this oven door seal. Well, I can certainly smell <laughs> cooking. Obviously there is some grease in this seal. It has removed a lot of the gunk. Again, I'm gonna have to do it a bit more, but that is better than it was. This oven door comes off on my particular oven, so it is easy if I take the oven off, I can use the steam to blast out grease from areas I can't normally reach. To finish the oven cleaning demo, we'll see if we can clean any of this oven rack. So for this, I can fit the brass brush onto the end of the concentrator nozzle. We'll just give it a quick go. Well, it's a lot of hard work. I mean, it is starting to come clean, but it's still a lot of scrubbing. It's, it's not easier really than putting on a chemical. Obviously, if you want to limit the use of chemicals in your home, it is better than nothing. But yes, it's coming clean, but... that's not too bad I can see here definitely it's still going to take effort it's not effortless the power of the steam is removing the grease I can actually see now you can see the middle part here compared to the bits I haven't gone over 
It does work, but don't expect it to be easy. This is real life dirt. When you see steam cleaners demonstrated on home shopping channels, they dirty up the surfaces deliberately. And sometimes I think I see steam cleaners being demonstrated and it looks too easy because it's not genuine. This is at least genuine dirt that has burnt on over a matter of weeks. It is cleaning it, but as I said, it does take some time and effort to get everything spotless. So it's confirmed really what I've thought about steam cleaners. I like them for being able to shoot the steam into areas you can't get a brush or a cloth. But for really difficult dirt, you're still going to have to put some elbow grease in. I've just spent a few minutes with the steamer with the nylon brush attached on my cooker hood filters. This is the one I've cleaned. I took it to the sink and used the brush. This is the one I haven't cleaned. I think you can see there is a difference. This certainly feels less greasy. I'll need to spend a bit more time to get it 100% clean, but that's something else you can use it for. You can see the backs look much the same. But there is a difference, I can see a difference. Not much of one, but that's something else you can use your steam cleaner for. Cleaning your mesh cooker hood filters. As the kitchen and bathroom are the two rooms I think you'll use the neat steam cleaner in the most, I brought it upstairs to my ensuite to uh, see what the power of steam can do. I noticed as I was carrying it up two flights of stairs, it seemed fairly empty, so I'm going to put some more water in. Now you're supposed to leave this 20 minutes to cool down and release all the steam. So what I've done, I turned off the unit and I squeezed the trigger and left it in the locked position for all the steam to disperse and it took a couple of minutes. So now there's no pressure in the system, I'm going to leave it a few more minutes to cool down a bit and then carefully remove the cap here and top it up with water. Okay, well I think I've left it long enough to cool down, but I'll very gingerly start to release the cap. As I've said on steam cleaners I've had before, big ones, you couldn't release the cap until there was no pressure. I think I'm okay. There we go. I've not left this 20 minutes, more 10 minutes, I think. But we might get some splattering when I pour some more water in because the boiler will still be quite hot. No, it's fine. I think the 20 minutes that NEAT suggests in their instructions is on the, you know, is on the side of caution, really. As long as you've released the pressure, excuse me while I fill the tap, fill the jug with the tap again. As long as you've released all the steam before you attempt to open the boiler, you should be fine. Whoops, that's gone everywhere. Do it slowly, then it won't spill everywhere. I have to mop that up in a minute. I'm back with the neat steam cleaner and as you can see from the green light it's ready to steam again. One little tip for you to avoid the mistake I just made. When I was releasing the pressure from the boiler I'd locked the trigger in the open position so steam was coming out of it. What I forgot to do was release the trigger. So I came upstairs, I left it to heat up. I came upstairs hearing a very loud hissing noise and realized that I'd left the nozzle with the uh, trigger open and it was steaming all over the floor. Fortunately, no damage, it was just lying on the floor. So uh, no harm done, but that's a tip for you. Remember to release the, the continuous steam button 
when you turn the machine back on again after refilling. Okay, well, let's see what I can do in the bathroom. I'm gonna continue with the concentrator nozzle and have a go at the bottom of my shower screen. This is my shower in the ensuite. There's normally a white plinth here, but recently we had a leak and a plumber had to fix it and I haven't got round to putting the plinth back on. The most tricky thing to clean in this ensuite is the bottom of the shower tray, just here between the bottom here and the frame on the door. Now, I have to be honest with you, when people shower in this, things fall off their bodies. You know, this is real life and you get hairs and other gunk collecting here. Now to clean it, what I normally do is spray on some bathroom cleaner, leave it for a few minutes, and then with a cloth, I rub it clean, and then I have to take the shower head and carefully try and spray water down here, trying to avoid wetting the floor, so any debris goes into the shower tray and I can rinse it down the drain. So I think it'll be useful to have this jet of steam actually being able just to get rid of all the gunk, the soap scum, the hairs, just enough to spray it out from under here into the shower, shower tray where I can get to it. It was cleaned fairly recently. It looks far worse than this normally. So um, forgive me the fact that I haven't left it to get really filthy, but you know I do keep things clean, but I know that this is gonna be a useful tool. So let's give it a go. I'll just give it a wipe with a, a different microfiber cloth. This one's supposed to be for bathrooms. Well, it's done pretty well. It's certainly got into the nooks and crannies. What I often have to do is take a cotton bud for the area right in the corner here. I'm able to blast out any debris from right in the corner, so that is really useful. You can see all the gunk that the steam has blasted from underneath the shower screen. That's amazing and uh, well worth the purchase just for that in my opinion obviously this cleaner will do so much more but just being able to do this that's really going to help my cleaning obviously now i've uh, released all that dirt i've got to clean the shower tray and i can still use steam all around the inside For the actual tray, I would probably put the microfiber bonnet on with the triangular brush and clean the shower tray that way. But as I haven't got a clean one, I can't do that yet. I think I will order the optional tool accessory kit with all the extra brushes and uh, the microfiber pads. Also, the shower seal here often gets moldy, so you can use the steam to help clear out the mold. And for more stubborn dirt and grout, I can connect one of the nylon brushes. And for chrome taps, just apply some high pressure steam and then finish with a microfiber cloth. I fixed the glass and window head to the end of the hose. I'm gonna try it on the shower screen. It's not filthy dirty. I think I might need a cloth handy because I assume there's going to be some drips Yes, it does drip rather a lot, so it's not uh, probably the best thing to use. I'll have to wipe off the excess with the towel. 
but I'm sure it will leave once it's dried a streak free shine and any residue of detergent or chemicals that you've had on the glass beforehand will be removed by the steam it does actually do a good job it just is quite messy with the drips so just be wary of it dripping on the floor you might need to put a towel just underneath the area you're cleaning and if I was to do the inside of the door I can do the inside of the shower cubicle door as well but again it's dripping and you will need a cloth tea towel or, or microfiber cloth just to wipe it down afterwards but yes I don't think I'll be using this particular steam cleaner for doing glass not often anyway I don't think I'll be cleaning my toilet very often using this steam cleaner but I might use it from time to time for a really deep clean especially around the areas I can't get a cloth into for inside the toilet though you can't beat bleach in my opinion it's the only cleaner I've found that removes well I don't have to go into detail do I the brown stuff that comes out of people's bottoms it often gets stuck on the pan in the cleanest of houses all the toilet cleaners I've tried it will not remove that sort of stain you need bleach but for doing areas that I can't possibly get my cloth into then I can blast it away using the steam cleaner As the floor in my ensuite is just a regular vinyl floor, I can use the steamer on it. I just can't use it on my Amtico floor in the kitchen. So I've attached the floor brush and fitted one of the microfiber pads. It just attaches with Velcro. So let's clean the floor. Well, that's the end of my demonstration on this neat steam cleaner. Is it a keeper? Well, yes, I can't return it anyway. I've had it too long, but I won't be selling it either. I think it's going to be a useful addition to my cleaning arsenal. I'm not going to use this anywhere near as many times as I use my vacuum cleaner, for example, but I will be using it at least on a monthly or fortnightly basis. It really is good. A few niggles about it, there's nowhere to store all the accessories and the fact you can't take the hose off and have somewhere separate to store that, that's a little niggle. It gives out a lot of steam, it does it pretty fast and it doesn't take too long to cool down for you to refill it in between cleanings. It is supposed to last around 50 minutes. Obviously I've not timed the amount of steam I've used in the demonstration and I've been using it a lot more than I've been filming it. So I've probably used more steam than I would normally if I was to use it around my house and then I've 
had to set up my lights and my camera and everything. So when I'm using this and I'm not filming it, I'm going to find even more things for it to do and I'll continue cleaning what I have been cleaning in this video and finish the job. If you have any questions about this machine, please comment below and I'll try to answer them. But I think I'll definitely go for the accessory bag. It is $29.99 at the time of making this video. I'll get it from Amazon, the same place I bought this machine. If you want to check out the Amazon price, I'll put a link below. It is an affiliated link, so if you decide to buy one of these, then I will get a little bit of commission that helps me pay for new items to show you on my channel. So from me and the neat steam cleaner, it's goodbye and thanks for watching.